All right, now the next part um, or the next things uh, we're going to tackle uh, the data sheet is going to be the clock polarity and the clock phase for your um, SPI uh, protocol here. So let's take a look at what the data sheet says about that. Um, well, it gives us some more things, right? That uh, it supports 8 to 16 bit transfer frame format. Uh, Multi-master mode, like I told you before, you can have more than one master. You can have more than one slave as well. Uh, the fastest you can operate your SPI is at the peripheral clock divided by two. Um, in the F1, I'm not sure if the uh, P clock two, I think, is actually divided by two. So if you're operating your microcontroller at 72 megahertz, you might have to watch that. Uh, in my case, the SPI is on the APB2 bus, and it's um, also running at 32 megahertz. So in my um, L0 chip, the fastest I will be able to get my um, SPI to operate would be at 16 megahertz. That's the maximum. Uh, obviously, there's prescalers that I can use to make it go slower, but the fastest I'll ever get it would be 16. <clears throat> Excuse me, 16 megahertz. Um, and then there's these uh, this talks about uh, NSS management and I'll explain that in uh, the next video. But right now we're talking about uh, the programmable clock polarity and phase. Uh, so what does that mean? And again, I have a nice handy dandy diagram for you. Um, okay, so clock polarity and clock phase. Um, so they're, they're nothing more than just, um, where are we? Here is the, let me show you something. Here's the registers. So here's clock polarity and here's clock phase. So they're nothing more than just some bits that you're going to set to either zero or one. But what will they do? Well, when you have a clock phase to zero, um, you're going to sample your data. As you can hear it says sample. You'll sample your data on the first edge. Um, whether it's rising or falling, it's going to be you're going to sample the data on the first edge. In phase one, you will sample your data on the trailing edge. Now, if the polarity of your clock is zero, that means it's like this, then it just so happens that the first um, edge, in this case, is a rising edge. So with phase zero and clock polarity zero, you'll sample your data on the rising edge, which is kind of, it's actually it's exactly what you see right here. This is an SPI timing diagram and it's here's the um the edge rising and that edge falls right in between of your your when your bit is already set high or already set low it doesn't fall on the transition right so you want your sample to always fall right in the middle of the the high or low time of your your actual data so in this case, as you can see here, this clock edge is rising, so and it's right in the middle of the data. So this is when it's sampling the data. So that mode is uh, phase zero, polarity zero. Now again, phase one um, would be that it would sample the data on the falling edge. If you set your polarity to one and your phase to zero, then it would invert your clock and then the first edge would actually be a falling edge and it'll sample your um your data on a falling edge so if you were to look at this if you were to take take this clock and invert it then this would be a falling edge and it would just sample um here but it would, it would be a falling edge now there's also this mode where your phase is one and your clock is one and in this phase one mode, it samples on the trailing edge. And now the trailing edge has become a rising edge um, when you inverted your uh, your clock. So there's all this, so there's these four different modes in which you can use your um, your SPI. Now your question might be like, well, which one's better? Which one's faster? Which one do I use? How do I know when to use one or the other? Well, the good thing is that that's not up to you, right? Um, because whatever you're using, in my case, okay, I'm using these LEDs and they're not officially SPI things, but if you did have something like a sensor and it communicated via SPI, the data sheet of that sensor would tell you 
hey, um, this sensor uses SPI with phase zero or SPI in mode two or mode three. And knowing that, you go into your microcontroller and you set it accordingly, um, those bits that I showed you. So that's how you know what to, to use to do. Um, a lot of times you'll find that things just use a regular um, zero zero configuration and you don't even have to set anything because that's the default configuration of the um, the peripheral and the microcontroller. Um, so yes, that's really what I wanted to tackle in this, um, what's my timer now, five minutes. That's what I wanted to tackle, um, at least in this video, um, the polarity and phase and the fact that ultimately it's not really up to you um, what you use more than it is dependent on what device you're, you're talking to. Um, so in the next video, we'll talk about multi-slaves and uh, managing the slave select line and, and, and what all of that means.